This is LIMS, the La Trobe Institute for Molecular Science, and it's a building that's making a bold statement on a number of levels. This $100 million facility is positioning La Trobe University as an international research leader in the fields of molecular science and biotechnology, and along the way, inspiring and teaching the next generation of Australian scientists. So what role does the physical environment play in this journey? And how does a building's design influence the way we both teach and learn? In this edition of NDY TV, I look to uncover the engineering design elements which contribute to the success of this facility. From its beginnings as a design competition in 2009, the brief for the design and construction of the LIMS building was clear. Create a building that is both functional and symbolic of the future, rather than reflective of the past. It's been up to the design team to ensure the delivery of this intent. At the time this building came to market, the, the adoption of an integrated platform for 3D design was coming and we'd been investing a lot of time in that built off about eight or ten years of drawing in 3D on our own. Uh, so we used Revit on this particular project, which was uh, one of two or three major projects that we'd started on. Uh, and it's been a great example of being able to adopt that technology on an integrated platform with our architectural partners and our structural engineering partners, such that the design could be really integrated and we could test that coordination all the way through the design process. Uh, and the, the complicated facilities that are in this building is testament to its success of that application. Molecular science research is one of the strong points of this university. It's up there with the best of them in the country. Indeed, it has a, a world ranking uh, for molecular science research. Like any smart organisation, you invest in your strengths. And the Commonwealth Government could see the research strengths of this university in molecular science and uh, made a significant contribution. This investment recognises the importance of Australia's broader global scientific standing, but in particular, the role of La Trobe University as a key player in punctuating this reputation. Often you're doing a teaching building separate to a research building, so it's quite unusual to join teaching and research together. But the Institute itself had a very clear idea that they wanted a building which develop what they call the pathway, you know, that a student can come in, get excited about science, then become a first year student, and then eventually go through three years and then ultimately become a researcher. And to do that, all of that within one building, you know, it's quite an unusual brief. And I think introducing students to um, the idea of a five-star building, I think is also important. I mean, there's a lot of science and technology sitting behind five-star. It's not just more than a badge, it's a lot of thought and a lot of, uh, serious um, building services infrastructure which you know NDY has been instrumental in, in formulating and designing etc and it's good that, that students are, are exposed to that you don't get five-star buildings by just thinking it it's you know there's, there's a lot of work and effort that goes into designing that. Functional design indeed was a fundamental aspect of this build and sustainability was a core part of the brief sustainability was paid much more than lip service on this project. It was a non-negotiable. Sustainability was certainly a paramount consideration on this project and it was part of the brief for all consultants to design a sustainable building that achieved a five-star green star design education rating. This project um, was actually the first Latrobe University project to be delivered and designed uh, with specific environmental credentials. As the sustainability consultant on the project, uh, we acted as a facilitator between all the design disciplines, engaging and guiding the design team in determining the most appropriate design solution. So we assisted the team by providing our own internal tools, which are the Green Star Pathway and the Documentation Matrix, which both established a very clear framework for the design team to work within. So this management aspect of our involvement definitely was a key to the delivery of this project. The university set really high sustainability standards for the project. Um, that's not only just all the sensible things like you know, water usage and energy use, but it was also about you know, creating a great place for their students and staff to, to work in. 
So natural light's an important part of that. You know, the camp, what's great about the Latrobe campus is that it is in a great landscape setting. So pretty much from day one, we're trying to design a building where you always got great aspect out onto the, those landscaped areas, but you also got good natural light coming in. There are many factors um, contributing to indoor environment quality, um, including lighting levels, natural light, external views, air temperature, air flow, air humidity, and so on. And in the capacity of designers, we really have the power to positively impact on these aspects. Um, this is not an easy task at all because sometimes, uh, very often, even um, improvements in this area come with um, at the expense of energy consumption. So it's about finding the right balance between energy efficiency and indoor environment quality. And in LIMS, um, the quality of the indoor environment achieved by the design team is outstanding. Uh, but interestingly, the campus has always been very good from a performance perspective. There's a central plant area which services the whole of the campus. You know, it's a bit of a precursor to what other campuses are now doing in terms of co-generating um, power and the like within the campus. So we were able to tap into that within the Green Star system, which meant we we're able to achieve some really good performance for energy. Supporting the sustainability initiatives throughout the facility are a number of interconnected engineered solutions, solutions which add to the pedigree of this facility. The, the mechanical services design for the building is or can be considered fairly unique. At the very front end of, of those services, we make use of uh, the campus co-generation plant, which provides almost a free source of energy for, the, for, a, for a large segment of the mechanical services cooling requirements. So approximately 70% of uh, the building cooling capacity is provided by absorption chillers. Um, which use um, the campus cogeneration system waste heat in the form of hot water. So uh, therefore, ultimately, um, those absorption chillers generate cooling from natural gas, which has significant lower associated CO2 emission than the standard electricity-driven uh, cooling system. I'll add that all of the air conditioning uh, systems are overseen by, by a central building management system. Um, and that's, that's quite a critical component in terms of monitoring and controlling the different mechanical services in the building. The most interesting aspects of this project for me lie in its energy efficiency. This building consumes approximately 45% less energy than a, a standard education building, a business as usual education building. Um, and this has been achieved firstly by reducing the energy requirement of the building designing a highly uh, efficient energy system but also maximizing the reuse of the energy that was already available on site. LIMS has been designed with clearly visible and striking features but it's the many concealed and hidden services which deliver the greatest benefits to building occupants and users. Water efficient design is a key aspect of the delivery of this facility and it posed particular challenges for us because of the scientific uh, emphasis on the, on the use of the building, the function of the building, and hence the design that had to marry into that. We've got a rainwater uh, collection system in place, um, uh, and right behind this auditorium in, the, in one of several plant rooms for the building we've got um, two 50,000 litre rainwater collection tanks. Um, and those tanks are essentially linked to all of the rainwater collection parts of the building. Uh, roof guttering, balcony, hard stand areas that are unenclosed or otherwise external to the building, and they run up the building. In terms of the scientific areas of the building, which, which were more challenging, we, we have put in a, a closed system process cooling loop. Um, so rather than discharge wastewater used for process cooling to external wastewater systems, we actually harvest that separately. We, we run that through a, a loop 
which is collected in a settling tank. We, and we have a central BMS facility that's been delivered under the mechanical services arm of our services delivery <laughs> is strategic. It's close to critical in terms of the control function that it provides for mechanical services systems. You're automated centralised controls. You can still manually control things, but the building is designed largely hands-free uh, and for automated operation. There's a lot of handshaking activity between what's happening with lighting and what's happening with air conditioning uh, because the two are, ve are very, very highly dependent on occupancy. The innovation, ingenuity and integrated intelligence achieved at LIMS was made possible by a deep sense of collaboration and understanding amongst the design team. To do a building like this, it's got to be very collaborative. So both our team and the NDY team put in an enormous amount of effort with the scientists to work out really what it is they needed within their laboratory environments, research laboratories and indeed the teaching laboratories. Uh, to make sure when they moved in on day one that it all worked perfectly for them to achieve what they want to achieve from a research perspective. So you know, collaboration was absolutely essential to get this project right. It's very satisfying being able to be part of a design team that's been able to create such a striking example of uh, architectural design, uh, one that's both uh, physically pleasing to, to look at on the outside but also functionally uh, works very well and is quite flexible to deal with the varying research requirements of um, of the research laboratories and also the teaching environments. It's been a pleasing in, um, delivery process through the design and construction, particularly working with Lyons and helping Kerry Lyon achieve his uh, architectural aspirations of the building, which are obviously so striking on the outside and, uh, and meeting their functional requirements and architectural requirements on the inside as well. Oh, look, it was just delightful last Monday to see the students uh, come in, into this laboratory and take their seat. Uh, probably oblivious to all that's gone on to get them there, but that's what it's about. Uh, and uh, that's, that's the pleasure of, build, of building these sorts of projects. There's a good, strong public interest in getting these sorts of buildings off the ground. You know, strengthening your education system, strengthening your research capability. And I'm talking now beyond the university. These are good public investments. LIMS is truly an extraordinary educational facility. Form, function, sustainability and a playful sense of boldness combine in equal measure to create a learning environment of the highest order, inspiring the next generation of scientific leaders won't be too difficult in this environment. Who said art and science can't be happy bedfellows?